Look how this man escaped from prison. He hid in the toilet to shave off his face full of beard. Then he dips his hair in water and styles it. Then he takes the guard's clothes out of the toilet. Change clothes to do a good haircut. At this point, he disguised as a prison guard. He walks calmly through the prison workshops. When he gets to the door, pulled out the forged access card in advance. Casually swipe it. Then he easily left the prison. I went to the street. Bought a small yellow vest for two pounds. Saw a luxury car needing parking. He rushed up and pretended to be a parking boy. Not only did he drive away the luxury car. He also earned 100 bucks in tips. And he is the top scam artist Jack. At this point the warden asked the police Smith for help. Because Smith is the only one who has caught Jack. But what confused Smith was that. Jack will be released from prison in two months. Why would he want to escape from prison at this time? So after reviewing the video of Jack's visit, he found that, a month ago, Jack's young girlfriend had visited him in prison. Smith read from the woman's lips. The last thing the woman said was goodbye. And she never came back. Smith concluded that Jack must have gone to see his girlfriend. So Smith went to Jack's girlfriend's place. Sure enough, Jack was alone in the house when Smith told his men to come and get him. Jack saw a gold thread on Smith's shoulder. Do you know what this is? Smith obviously did not know. It turns out that a few hours ago, Smith was investigating a case in the bank's vault. The technician was cracking the code of the safe. The vault suddenly exploded. The police were covered in dust. The evidence was also instantly blown up. I'll tell you what this is. You'll meet me in prison in a week. After Smith agreed, Jack said this is the security. Line of $100 new Canadian dollars. After that, Jack was taken away by the police. The next day Smith learned from his assistant that the gold line was indeed a security line for the new Canadian dollar. But this new coin has not been officially issued yet. How did Jack know that? So Smith went to the prison to find Jack for an appointment. When he learned that Smith was hunting a Dutch crime syndicate, Jack said, I'll help you catch them if you get me out of here. Just put electronic shackles on my feet. I will always be under your supervision. So the next day Jack walked out of jail with the electronic shackles and he walked out of the prison. Then Jack was put up in a small hotel and his range was only two miles. Obviously, this environment didn't suit Jack's temperament. So Jack slipped into a thrift store. Here he met a rich woman who was donating clothes. The two of them hit it off. He learns that the rich woman's mansion is nearby. So Jack was invited to live in the rich woman's mansion. In addition to helping the rich woman feed her dog and water her flowers every day, he also chatted with the rich woman's little granddaughter. This is a $250,000 bond. However, the bond was forged by forgery experts. Jack found the same CH letters. Jack found the same CH letters as the bond. But then the teapot appeared out of nowhere and stopped the two men. Jack said he admired the teapot's skill. But the teapot wasn't too friendly to him. Then, on the pretext that the church was still being restored, the two men were driven away. The next day they learned that the teapot had booked a flight for a week later to Holland. It seems the teapot was alerted. If they don't catch the teapot this time and let him run back home, Jack would be sent back to prison to serve another sentence. So Jack finds his good friend Mike again. He asks him to use all his connections to find out about the bond. Two days later, Mike gave Jack a note. According to the address on the note, Jack and the two of them found a warehouse. At that moment, they heard the sound of a printing press in the warehouse. Jack concluded that the bonds must be being printed inside, but there was no evidence. Smith could not apply for a search warrant. At this point, Jack was running out of time. The next day Jack looked at his electronic shackles. Suddenly a brilliant idea came to him. He took his car keys. He drove alone to the warehouse. Then he got out of the car and grabbed his camera. He started taking pictures of the warehouse. After successfully angering a few thugs at the door, Jack was escorted into the warehouse by the thugs. Here Jack saw piles of books on the floor, and the machine was constantly printing bonds. Then the thugs put Jack in a glass room. At that moment, the teapot came cursing. Jack took a look and locked the door. And this glass room happens to be bulletproof. So the teapot ordered someone to get the key. And Jack sat down and started to taunt the teapot. Are you too proud of yourself? To put your name on a bond? That's stupid. You'll open the door later. See how I will kill you. As soon as he said that, a siren sounded outside. It turns out that Jack's electronic shackles out of range will automatically alarm. At this moment Smith led the police, said to catch Jack the fugitive. So the police broke down the door of the warehouse. Teapot and his men saw that there was no way to escape. Had to surrender. Then they found the original bond in the teapot safe. They found the original bond. At this point Smith said, Jack had done a very good job this time. So he applied for Jack's credentials. Jack was officially hired as his exclusive advisor. So not only did Jack not have to go back to jail, but also can continue to chat with the rich woman's little granddaughter. Customs seized a batch of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs fairy tale books. Although these books were published in 1944, but the books themselves are not worth much at all. Why did the bookseller go to the trouble of shipping them here? So Smith went to the bookseller and asked him about it. The bookseller claimed that all his paperwork was legal, but he looked like he was in a panic at that
that moment, the bookseller's lawyer came in. Smith had no choice but to stop asking questions. But when he came out, Smith learned that the bookseller had never contacted his lawyer. Smith felt bad when he returned to the house again. The bookseller had already been killed. So the next step, they had to look in the books for clues. When Jack found the first page of each book, there is a blank inside paper. So they should be trying to forge something to print on this paper. Then Smith found a ticket to the archives in the bookseller's wallet. Smith found a ticket to the archives. So the two of them went to the archives to investigate. And after learning that the bookseller had indeed been here and took pictures of this 1944 bond, Smith took out the inside pages of the book and compared them. And it was a perfect match in size, the curator said. Although this bond is now worth $250,000, but the other 599 have gone missing. This is the only one in existence. Jack found out after observation. This bond is a fake, although the old paint was used on it. But the smell of ink is new. If you don't believe me, smell it. The curator was dumbfounded when he smelled it. This is impossible. It turns out that the bookseller came to the archives twice before. The first time he took pictures of the bonds and used them to forge them. The second time he really switched the forged bonds. This way, as long as they claim they found the other 599 bonds, the archives would produce their own original bonds. For comparison, and the ones in the archives had already been switched, then the comparison must be the same. So they can exchange the huge amount of $150 million in cash. Next, Jack had to find the person who forged the bonds as soon as possible. So he went to his good friend Mike. Mike, after seeing how well the bonds were forged, he thought that an expert like this would usually sign their masterpieces to show off his mastery of his craft. Sure enough, Jack looked through a magnifying glass. Jack found two letters CH on the bond, and CH is the initials of the forgery expert Teapot. At the time, the Teapot was renovating a church on 3rd Street, so the two Smiths went to the church to find out what was going on.